Hi, everyone. It's Tara Bianca with Be Light Transformative Therapy. And today I want to finally address this issue about how to breathe when you're dealing with high blood pressure. So some of you have been asking me for a really long time to talk about this. And in fact, I was just speaking with someone earlier about this topic. So it's kind of fresh in my mind. And I feel like there's no better time than the present to talk about it. So let's take a look. This video is going to be super informal today. As you can see, you know, I've been teaching all weekends and I actually took some time to get out into nature and get outside a little bit. And I just honestly didn't really feel like setting up my lights and my whole production setup. So we're going to keep it really simple today, but I hope you'll still get a lot of value out of this video. So let's just jump right into it. For those of you dealing with high blood pressure, so number one, and I always have to say it, so forgive me, but as we know, I am not a physician, right? So when it comes to your heart stuff in particular, please make sure you're working closely with your physician to monitor what is going on inside your body in particular. And then from there, you know, what do we know about people with high blood pressure in general as a generalization? So we can assume that they tend to be stuck in more of a chronic stress response, right? that they're not able to effectively manage the stressors in their life. And when I say that, I mean that at the most physiological level, their body, their physiology is not coping well with those stressors, not managing those stressors well. And so for that, they tend to have a lower heart rate variability. They tend to have poor, uh, poor baroreceptor sensitivity, uh, poor vagal tone, meaning they can't readily get into that down regulated state, that parasympathetic state, that rest and digest mode. And then they also tend to have sleep issues, right? So there's some amount of sleep disordered breathing going on. And in fact, there's a very strong correlation between people with high blood pressure and things like sleep apnea, for example. Okay, so we've got someone who's probably not sleeping well, or at least they're not getting into that deep restorative sleep. They're probably over breathing during the day. So there's some amount of chronic hyperventilation going on. They're stuck in this low grade continual stress response, and they're not able to downregulate. And they're sort of losing that pliability and responsiveness of their blood vessels. So when it comes to breathing now, what can we do about it? How can we start to address this issue? Well, first and foremost, it's not going to be a, how are you going to do your breath practice for 10 minutes today kind of situation, right? This is a, how are you going to breathe every moment, all day throughout the day situation. This is a full revamp of the breathing. This person really needs to focus on increasing breath awareness and also on improving daily functional breathing. So how are we going to improve that daily functional breathing? We have to go back to focusing on the fundamentals, right? The most fundamental aspects of our breathing. So this is nothing fancy. We're not focusing on a lot of tricks and gadgets here. We're getting back to really fundamentals of breathing. So those of you who've been watching my channel for a long time, you probably know all the things I'm about to say because I try to repeat it throughout a lot of my videos. I kind of pepper it through all of them, but let's go through it today. So the things I'm about to say are not just relevant for people with high blood pressure, but just for all of you who want to quick review of the most functional breathing for your daily breath. This is sort of the main principles that we choose to focus on. So number one, nasal breathing. So nasal breathing all day, every day, as much as possible, including during sleep. So you're unconscious, right? How do you know what you're doing? This may involve some amount of mouth taping at night. So if that concept scares you or it intrigues you or you don't know where to begin, I've included a link to a mouth taping video I made a few months ago, and you can find that in the video description and learn a little bit more about it. Then number two, slow breathing, right? How slow? Well, slower than whatever you're doing at rest, right? Slower than whatever your natural resting respiratory rate is. Because for those of you with high brush blood pressure, there's probably a very high resting respiratory rate, a little higher than we would like it to be, some amount of chronic hyperventilation. So we're going to want to start to slow that down. How do you do it? It requires you to cultivate some amount of breath awareness. 
So what does that look like? So you're going about your day and then you just drop into your body and it's not going to happen automatically. You have to make a practice of it for it to become automatic. So you're just dropping into your body and you're checking in with your breathing. How am I breathing in, in this moment? Am I breathing fast, shallow, upper chest? Am I holding my breath? Okay, whatever I'm doing, and let's assume it's not good, <laughs> whatever I'm doing, let me just take a few moments here to just consciously slow it down and deepen my breath, which brings me to my next point, which is deep breathing, right? So what does deep breathing look like? I've talked about this quite a bit too, so I'm going to link to yet another video, which you can check out. Um, it's something I posted a few months ago on basic breathing mechanics about how to deepen the breath, about how to monitor the rib cage to really activate the diaphragm and make sure that that breath is coming into the lowest lobes of the lungs, really pulling that breath in slowly and deeply. And then finally, light breathing, quiet breathing, easy, effortless breathing. When? all the time. <laughs> so what is the strategy? How do we start to incorporate these basic principles of functional breathing into our day? How do we start to cultivate greater breath awareness? You know, you can start out in the most kind of crude sort of way, like do something like set an alarm, right? So I would say even be a little bit excessive about it in the beginning, so throughout your day, for all of your waking hours, maybe you even set an alarm to go off once every hour on the hour. And that is your indicator to just pause for a moment, maybe close your eyes, go inside, check in with your breathing, check in with your body. Can you pause for one to three moments and just focus on your breathing, noticing what it's doing in that moment, and then asking yourself those questions. Can I slow it down? Can I deepen it? Can I get my lips closed if my mouth is hanging open? And can I make my breath quiet and easy? And I promise you, when you start to check in once per hour, every hour throughout your day, it really adds up. You start to cultivate greater awareness and you start to change the habit of your breathing. Okay, but then beyond just cultivating greater breath awareness, maybe sometimes you do want to do a proper guided breath session, right? Maybe you want to put aside a chunk of 10 minutes or 15 minutes or 20 minutes to really practice a particular cadence, for example. So what can we do for that situation? So in terms of a guided practice, I would say this group, this high blood pressure group is going to want to avoid any kind of strong breath holding. Instead, we're going to want to focus on really, again, getting that breathing functional, slow, and deep. So what are the breath rhythms that really tend to work well for that? I would say any type of what we call coherent breathing would be really helpful. So here, think about a one-to-one -one ratio. So a perfect ratio, one-to-one -one of inhale to exhale. And normally we do this at five breaths per minute or six breaths per minute. I have a bunch of those guided breath sessions on my channel. I can definitely link to those for you in the video description. Sometimes slowing down the breath that much, that much might make you anxious, right? So if five or six breaths per minute feels way too slow for you, you're not ready for it, you're starting to get anxiety, or you're starting to feel stress, then we just adjust a little bit, right? So can you breathe in for three counts and out for three counts, for example? Or can you breathe in for four counts and out for four counts? And can you sustain that for five or 10 or 15 minutes? So even if you're breathing in for three and out for three, that's still dropping your breathing down to 10 breaths per minute, which is still going to be much slower than what your regular resting respiratory rate is, especially if you're stuck in this chronic hyperventilation where maybe you're breathing 17, 18, 19 breaths per minute. So you're still going to get a lot of benefit out of that. And then like everything with health and wellness and taking on new health habits, it's just so important to remember that there's a lot of bio individuality with this game. So you're going to have to play around a bit and see what works best for you. 
and, and really test it out in this case, right? So this is a very measurable thing when you're dealing with blood pressure issues. So check your blood pressure before and after whatever breath session you decide to try out that day. Or if you have the capacity to do so, maybe you're even monitoring your blood pressure during your session and you're seeing how your body is responding in real time to that particular cadence. And so then what can we say? If it makes your blood pressure go up, then that's probably not the best choice for you, right? And it's time to explore other cadences, other breath rhythms, other guided sessions until you find that thing that really seems to work for you. And then um, going further with the guided breath sessions, I think the other option that really makes sense to me is any kind of extended exhale breathing. Why? Because when we focus on the exhale, we're really focusing on um, nurturing that parasympathetic response, right? We're really putting the emphasis on this down regulation, this rest and digest mode. So for this particular demographic, I really like either a three, five cadence or a four, six cadence cadence. And I have examples of those on my in my guided uh, breath sessions as well. So I'll link to a couple of those in the video descriptions. Um, and again, you'll just have to play around a little bit and see which cadence works best for you. Some people will be able to slow down their breath more and some people not so much. So play around and find the combination that works for you. And then I know I said I tend to avoid breath holds with this group, and that's true. But that series of mini breath holds that I teach is so gentle and it's so calming to the mind and the nervous system. It might actually be a really nice alternative to explore, and it might offer you some variety, some variation in your practice. So I'm actually going to encourage you to check out that one example of these mini breath holds since they are so gentle. And I'll include that link in the video description too. Okay, so then the next question is, how often should I be practicing these things? And I would say, especially in the beginning, as often as possible, you know, it's nice if you can make your breathing practice the super meditative, sacred experience, unless not being able to create that meditative space is the thing that's preventing you from doing your breath practice, right? So, I think some of us get this idea like everything has to be perfect, quiet, and create this real sacred container to do our breath work, when in fact, if it's impossible for you to create that in your life, it's just holding you back from that goal of improving your breathing. So I would instead encourage you to start thinking of ways of incorporating your breath practice into the daily activities that you're already doing. So for example... Can you focus on your breathing when you're in the shower, right? So I'm in the shower, I'm doing what I'm doing, but I'm aware of my breathing. And maybe I choose a cadence in the shower. Maybe, maybe I'm breathing in for three and out for five or in for five and out for five, whichever cadence you decided was working well for you. Can you focus on your breathing while you're driving to work, while you're grocery shopping, when you take the dog for a walk? while you're cooking dinner, while you're watching TV, et cetera. So you get the point. Can you bring it into the daily activities that you're already doing? You know, it's nice if we can make it this really sacred ritualistic thing, but it really doesn't have to be precious like that. You know, the fact is you're breathing all day. So anytime you can tap into this thing that you're already doing and just do it a little better, you're going to get a lot of benefit out of that, especially if you drop in multiple times per day for several minutes at a time. Those little habit changes really add up to big, powerful transformation over time. Okay, so I know I went through that really fast. I'm kind of talking fast tonight, but uh, I hope this helped to at least clarify a little bit how to use breathing as a tool for managing your blood pressure. And as I said, you know your body better than anyone else. So really uh, feel empowered to play around a bit from the list of exercises that I gave you and try them out and find what works best for you to really help you mitigate and improve your specific symptoms. And also I'm going to repeat it once again, just because, <laughs> but when it comes to your heart health, please just feel free to work in conjunction with your physician on this one. So maybe let them know what you're doing, tell them about this breathing that you're practicing and see if you can even allow them to help you monitor what is going on in your body.
Okay, so that's all for today. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Also, I just wanted to let you know that I just opened up my private online Be Like community to everyone for free. So this is my private online holistic health community that I host on my website. And I, I'm really feeling that I want to spend more time nurturing and growing this community. So I normally charge a monthly fee for it, but right now you can join the group totally for free. There's no tricks. There's no commitment. You just use code BLC free at checkout. And then also be sure to check out my totally free breath training called the breath basics, a six day challenge. And you can also check out my deep dive into functional breathing called the four week breath Boot Camp. And then as always, if you'd like to donate to my channel, I'm always so grateful for your support. You may do that by visiting my buy me a coffee page. Thank you so much for joining me tonight. I hope you got some value out of this discussion and I look forward to seeing you next time.